will be protected by God. And welcome back to Atreyu News. We've seen the momentum shift. I've reported on this before, and so it is happening again. Austria is poised to elect a far-right coalition. The decision shows how Europe is gripped by border anxiety. I wouldn't call it anxiety at this point. The dramatic victory of Sebastian Kurz in yesterday's Austrian election will send shockwaves across Europe. The dashing new chancellor is a political prodigy, not only because he is just 31, but because he is leading a mainstream conservative party into territory previously dominated by the far right. Exit polls say his People's Party has emerged as a clear winner and will probably form a new coalition with the Populist Freedom Party and its leader, Heinz Christian, whom Kurz has deftly outflanked. Still, this means the Austrians have elected their most right-wing government since Hitler's Anschluss in 1938. Kurz will therefore need to stamp his authority on his coalition partners from the outset. He promises to impose tough new restrictions on refugees and economic migrants to ensure that Austria is never again overwhelmed by an influx on the scale of two years ago. He is thereby breaking with the cozy liberal establishment that has dominated politics in Vienna for decades, but has also seen off the far right. The reason for Kerr's ascent can be put into two words, border anxiety. Austrians have seen themselves as Europe's sentinels since the Ottoman Turks were stopped at the gates of Vienna in 1683. They are at once cosmopolitan in culture and nationalistic in politics. Austria was happy to adopt coffee from the Turks, but remains deeply suspicious of Islam. Its new ban on the burqa and the Najab is very popular. Having embraced the EU's freedom of movement and even the open borders of the Schengen Agreement, Austria suffered a rude awakening in 2015 when Angela Merkel welcomed more than a million migrants into Europe, most of them via Vienna. Not for the first time, Austrians felt boxed in by decisions made in Berlin. As foreign ministers, Kurz saw his chance to speak for a nation gripped by border anxiety, and he seized it. And he is victorious. But I certainly wouldn't call it anxiety. I would call it more along the lines of being terrified of repeating the past. Now let's take a look at a recap of the rise of the far right across Europe. Oh, and the results are expected to favor the far right Freedom Party, which is likely to win up to 26% of the vote. But uh, here's a detailed report on how exactly a number of far-right populist parties across Europe have made a political gain in recent years, fueled, of course, by the migration crisis and other factors. A number of far-right populist parties across Europe have made political gains in recent years. It's been fueled by fears about Europe's largest migration crisis since World War II and bolstered by Brexit and Donald Trump's triumphant election campaign in the U.S. In France, National Front leader Marine Le Pen made it to the second round of the 2017 presidential election. Despite losing to Emmanuel Macron, she still achieved a record score, winning more than 10 million votes with her anti-Europe, anti-immigration campaign. The alternative for Germany party known as AFD won nearly 13% of the vote in Germany's 2017 general election, making it the third biggest political force in the country. The entry of dozens of hard-right nationalist MPs to the Bundestag chamber breaks a taboo in post-World War II Germany. The AFD started out in 2013 as an anti-Euro party and transformed into an anti-migrant, anti-establishment party. Jobbik, Hungary's radical nationalist party, has proved instrumental in blocking EU migrant quotas, although the right-wing ruling party has also adopted a tough anti-immigration stance. In Austria, the far-right Freedom Party managed to overturn the result of the presidential election in May 2016 due to procedural errors after leader Norbert Hofer was narrowly defeated. However, he was again defeated during the December 2016 rematch. Italy's populist Northern League was a key member of Silvio Berlusconi's coalition government. Its policy platform includes similarities with Trump's campaign, including economic protectionism and fighting immigration. 
In the Netherlands, firebrand Islamophobic Freedom Party leader Gert Wilders came second in 2017's parliamentary elections. In Bulgaria, ultranationalists entered government for the first time in May 2017, when an alliance of far-right parties, the United Patriots, formed a coalition with centre-right Prime Minister Boyko Borisov. So, now we see it. The momentum is on our side. Unmistakably, we are pivoting against globalism. On top of that, the great victory that has just taken place in Austria comes on the eve of ISIS being defeated in their own stronghold. Facing imminent defeat, ISIS fighters flee Syria's Raqqa under evacuation deal. They are being picked apart. Only 200 to 300 mostly foreign ISIS fighters are left in the militant group's de facto capital as U.S.-backed militias launch their final assault. It's so refreshing to see this come to an end. U.S.-backed militias said they had launched their final assault on Syria's Raqqa on Sunday after a convoy of Islamic State fighters left the city, leaving only a hardcore of jihadists to mount a last stand. The battle will continue until the whole city is clean, said a statement by the Syrian Democratic Forces, a U.S.-backed alliance of Kurdish and Arab militias. An SDF spokesman told Reuters that a total of 275 Syrian Islamic State fighters have departed the city, leaving behind around 200 to 300 mostly foreign fighters. Almost all civilians in Raqqa's Islamic State enclave have been allowed safe passage out as part of the deal. Raqqa's fall to the SDF now looks more imminent after four months of battle. We still expect there will be difficult fighting, said Colonel Ryan Dillon, spokesman for the U.S.-led international coalition backing the SDF in the war against the Islamic State. And, at the very same time, Steve Bannon declares war on the globalist Republicans who are standing in Trump's way. Awesome. Now we know why he left the White House. I was a bit skeptical on why he left and how he left and, and that sort of thing, but it's quite obvious. Trump got him out of the White House to once again become his attack dog. Watch this. Welcome back to the next revolution. Many in the elite thought, hoped, that last year's populist revolutions that led to Brexit and Donald Trump's election were the end. In fact, they were just the beginning, which is, in a way, the whole point of this show. Now, there are signs that 2018 is shaping up to be a big battle between the populists and the elitists in both parties. Steve Bannon has announced his intention to run populist primary candidates against every single Republican senator up for re-election next year, with the sole exception of Ted Cruz. Take a look at what Steve Bannon said to Sean Hannity. We are declaring war on the Republican establishment that does not back the agenda that Donald Trump ran on. Just voting is not good enough. You have to have a sense of urgency. Nobody's safe. We're coming after all of them, and we're going to win. This is not my war. This is our war. And you all didn't start it. The establishment started it. But I will tell you one thing, you all are gonna finish it. And in closing, I say, what a time to be alive. This era will be remembered for a thousand years. And the sooner we realize we are at war 24 hours of every single day, and the quicker freedom-loving people realize it, the better. God be with us. Or as one commentator put it, he'd rather live on his knees than die on his feet. And therein lies the road to war, because those voices don't speak for the rest of us. You and I know and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery.